Python on hardware. Okay, this week, lots of news. And I'm going to divide up the news in two sections. Straight up newsletter stuff. So this is from the newsletter. I'm, I, I've already scrolled down because we're going to talk about some other stuff in a second. But Python 3.1.1 to be twice as fast as its predecessors. Ooh. That's a... To people like that, because Python big deal. is Python's not, you yeah. know, it's not slow, but it could be faster. They, yeah. In October of 2022, uh, the plan is to have it quadrupled, but we'll see. Okay. It's in there. Okay. Um, so the presentation about all this and more is on GitHub. Uh, PSF Python Software Foundation has a new executive director. Meet Deb. You can read about Deb and more. Um, this was interesting. I, I, I'm going to caution y'all who are super Python fans. So IEEE Spectrum, top programming languages for embedded Python. Python? Could it be? Was it embedded or yeah. just? Yeah, so see the little chip? So it's web, it's computer. Oh, and embed. And embed. So Java is still being on mobile, C, mobile, C++. But I think these results are a little skewed, and I think it's our fault. OK. Because there's a lot of people getting into programming on microcontrollers, and they're using Circuit Python, they're using MicroPython, they're using Python on something like a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And so I think that it's it's skewing that way, which is fine. I, I don't necessarily think that everyone who's doing embedded is doing Python yet, but I think we're getting closer and closer because so many people know Python that it translates really well to whatever you happen to be in front of. And you know, batteries included, so you get very far very fast. And when people need to do things, like you were doing this um, HID uh, mouse from 30 years ago, use Python to interact with it. It makes it real easy. Makes it real easy. So it's interesting. Like I said, I, I don't think um, that Python is, is number one. Uh, uh, and they also classify Arduino as its own language on here. So that Arduino is number 11. Python zipped to the top at number one. I, I think, obviously, there's a lot of people using um, Arduino for embedded. So anyways. Um, interesting stuff. Take a look at it. IEEE Spectrum is, you know, serious business. So that's kind of neat to see. Um, we have all of the news that you can expect in our newsletter every single week. Um, this is kind of a neat um, the, a portable severance lumen terminal. I think uh, Todd Bot did that one. Um, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. like the DVD logo. And all the projects that uh, you know and love and get inspired by YouTube. There's some fun part. I like the little the spinning black and white thing. What's it called? The Crooks Radiometer. Somebody made like a cyber one. There is a LinkedIn class, CircuitPython, connecting a robot cat to the internet. I mean, look at that cat. Yeah, and uh, e-ink badges and more. But the news this week, a lot of it is uh, CircuitPython related because we, have, you know, we got to talk about it. Um, first up, thank you again, everyone who joined the Discord. Thirty-four thousand people. Um, this particular month happened faster, or the time period to get there. This is what the Discord growth looks like, all the way back from two thousand and nineteen. It's pretty linear. And uh, not bad. And we also don't uh, publish our server into the directory because there's it, bots use it and spam and lots of drive-bys. And so this is people who actually want to stop in and do things. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. If you look, it looks like right when COVID hit, there was a big spike. It looks like it was we, about March 2020. We, a lot of people We also joined. did a membership drive when we were in server discovery. We're just like, yeah. hey, everybody, stop by. But it, oh, yeah. but it turns out that that wasn't um, great for all of our moderators and for all of us because there was yeah. just a lot of. Um, Bots. Spam. Yeah. Um, and then on Reddit, we just hit 3,000 people on the CircuitPython Reddit. You can go to reddit.com slash r slash CircuitPython. And then we hit 350 libraries. And that's what we're talking about on Friday in Deep Dive. And here's a chart of how the libraries are going. Mm. Looking good. Nice graph. Yeah. And so um, I guess I, I wanted to ask you, because we, we turned this little segment into a standalone thing. Mm. Why do you think there's so many Circuit Python libraries? There's 350. I wrote a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, but why, but why do you think? Because there's, we have more Circuit Python libraries than Arduino libraries. Why did that happen? We we actually have about the same number, but um, really, I thought it was only. Uh, I think we have about. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, Circuit Python we have you know con contributions to. I, it's it's almost about the same. Okay, let's say it's. About, why did it catch up so fast? Yeah, why did it catch up so fast? Um, which is a good question. Um, you know, one of the things when we designed Circuit Python is. We kind of came at it backwards. One of the things I wanted to make sure is that we had a lot of libraries. It was easy to write libraries. It was easy to support libraries because at the time, um, I was writing libraries for you know MicroPython as well as for Python on Raspberry Pi, and that was what was driving me nuts. Was like I had to could support both because MicroPython was different enough from Python that the code wasn't compatible, and so we specifically designed. 
CircuitPython to make it so that code could run on a Raspberry Pi computer or a Raspberry Pi Pico now. Um, and it would be the same code. You know, the pin numbers would change, but that's normal. Like that, you know, that always changes. But the functionality and the, and the way the code was, was written and the libraries was written and supported would be the same. Um, so what's great is that for every product we make now, we make sure to have a CircuitPython library because it covers you know, hundreds of single board computers because Raspberry Pi and all the Raspberry Pi alikes, as well as the you know, 200 different, you know, 250, 260 different CircuitPython boards. And wow. the, universe, the universality of those libraries That's was, yeah, was really important. 295 boards. 290, almost 300. Uh, almost 300, 300 boards. There's a graphic coming. It's going to be the yeah. three. It's like it's like this, but 300. It's like three, but 300. Yeah. And um, another thing is that, um, you know, we sell hardware, and so I want to make sure that people can use our hardware with CircuitPython. And also, um, I wanted, you know, the final piece is that the, re you know, one of the things that, people find annoying about CircuitPython is they're like, why did you redo the bus and GPIO libraries? Like, why is it different than MicroPython? Why didn't you just use machine? And the answer was at the time, there was actually wasn't a unified um, interface. There wasn't a unified way to make sure that a library would run on every MicroPython board. Um, you know, later on machine was invented and Pi B went away, but for a long time, it was like every board had their own kind of slightly different way of, of, of defining stuff. And so, Having a universal bus library, a bus interface for CircuitPython meant that we could write libraries and they would work on every board. And so far, other than a couple freaky exceptions with like I squared C and, and you know, whether they have clock stretching support or not, pretty much every library will run on any CircuitPython board. And that yeah. that's, was a goal and I think we've done a really good job of it. Uh, and just from like a very high level thing, from I think an observer would say, oh, you have because you have lots of libraries, you have lots of boards, but because we have lots of boards, we have lots of libraries. Like it's, it's really neat. No, we neat. want the libraries first. The yeah. libraries came before the boards. It's really neat. And there's folks that have entire businesses based on the fact that they don't have to worry about the software for the hardware. Because every time there's a new version of CircuitPython, it just works because there's universal support across 295 boards. And so, another you know, 150 Linux boards. Yeah. So anyways, big milestone. Thank you everyone who's been uh, Contributor and uh, everyone who's been um, watching this story. It is part of the newsletter delivered to you every single week. We don't spam or anything like that. You can go to adafruitdaily.com and sign up. All right.